For this year's Oxfordshire Pumpkin Festival, Climatarian Kitchen will show you how to make our delicious pumpkin hummus. Don't throw out that meat. Turn it into a tasty, healthy treat. So in case it's not obvious, one of the reasons this is a great party dish is because you get to use the guts from a pumpkin you carve for Halloween to make a lovely hummus that's really healthy um, for any guests at a Halloween party, which you can't have this year, of course, because of COVID, but, uh, or for your family or whomever. And this keeps quite well, so it'll keep for four to five days in the fridge, no problem. Um, Here's a glimpse of Climatarian Kitchen's pumpkin hummus recipe, which you can download on the Good Food Oxford's Oxfordshire Pumpkin Festival website. Hey, don't fret if you don't have all the ingredients we've listed today. Hummus is a very forgiving recipe. Just look in, in your cupboard and see if you got something that'll work for an acid, some sort of nut butter, oil, seasoning, fresh garlic works great, a pulse, any of the beans, even lentils if you got them, and then some sort of nice vegetable to roast. The squash family works really well for this recipe, as would different sorts of root vegetables like beets, carrots. So we've whittled down all of those ingredients to just the basics. First and foremost, the star, our pumpkin meat, roasted last night in the oven and chilled and peeled and strained. Then we've got our protein, which is chickpeas and some tahini, which is made from roasted sesame seeds. We got our flavorings. We got the acid from the lemon juice, roasted extra virgin olive oil with garlic and some seasoning salt. And those are the ingredients for making a delicious, very, very healthy hummus that your entire family will I'm gonna want. add my lemon juice here and an equal amount of tahini, roughly. You know, cooking is never as exact as they'd like to make you think. But an equal amount of tahini here. And what I'm going to do is whip this in the food processor for one minute. Scrape it down and one minute more. And I use a timer because this is the most important step. You want to get it really well whipped and incorporated. And that forms the foundation for the rest of the hummus. Right. So we've just processed the tahini with your lemon juice. It gets nice and fluffy and much lighter in color. That's how you know it's ready for the next step. The next step is adding our lovely roasted garlic and about a tablespoon of the oil from the roasted garlic. You can always add more later, but you don't want to add too much at this stage. So just put it all in there, and we're going to pulse that until it's smooth. Okay, once you've pulsed that olive oil in there and it's smooth, just toss your seasoning in, pulse it again until it's smooth, and then we add our chickpeas. The chickpeas need to be drained first, and as I mentioned earlier, if you're cooking from dried, you need to make sure they've cooked for about 45 minutes and then cooled down before this stage. We pulsed in our olive oil and roasted garlic, and we pulsed in our seasoning, and now I've just added your, my drained chickpeas. We're gonna pulse this until smooth for about five minutes. Um, whenever you think it's ready, it's probably not yet. So grab a book, read a chapter, just leave it on. Just come back to scrape it every now and then. Our hummus is now ready to add the final star, which is pumpkin today. Could be any roasted vegetable, aubergine, courgette, roasted red peppers. Um, even some people like to use canned red peppers, the pimientos, and that's a really nice flavor too. I use at least as much of your roasted veg as your pulse. So we had uh, 250 grams of our chickpeas so we have at least 250 grams of pumpkin but i always say do it to taste and texture as well so sometimes i actually add a little bit more pumpkin um just to hide my pumpkin and things and get a little bit more of those lovely seasonal nutrients into the hummus but you want to do it in stages so when you start adding the pumpkin your hummus will fluff up quite quite quickly um, and you should be getting a nice orange there. If you want a really, really smooth hummus, you can start adding about a tablespoon of the juice per, um, at a time. And that will really uh, intensify the flavor of the pumpkin as well. So use the juice from the roasted pumpkin. Don't use the reserved liquid from the chickpeas if you want more pumpkin flavor. I'm going to add a little bit more pumpkin meat because uh, this is really, well, let's see. Yeah. Not pumpkin -y enough yet, so I'm going to add a little bit more pumpkin meat, pulse it again for a minute or two, and see where we are. All right, to serve this, it's pretty simple. You just plop a spoonful on a plate. 
Um, got some of the toasted pumpkin seeds from earlier here. Put those on, a couple other seeds of your choice. Sesame seeds are really nice on this too. Um, drizzle just a little bit of that roasted garlic oil on it, and then do yourself a dash or two of your seasoning and surround it by your favorite dipping vegetables. And here's what it looks like. And our lovely, lovely final dish there. So you can see it, it's just got a, yes, there is a little bit missing because I couldn't help myself. I just had to taste it, but. Thanks for watching. You can taste this pumpkin hummus and other delicious climatarian kitchen dishes as part of our pumpkin tasting menu. Available in a Taste It, Now Make It challenge at our Carve and Cook Pumpkin Party on Friday, October 30th. You must sign up to attend this party, made possible by Chairwell Collective in partnership with Chairwell Larder, Harvest at Home, and of course, Good Food Oxford.